Koro Koro, or you get me wine wine. Now, if you say you turn that giddy bar on top of the chairman television station, was over at Max TV. And this, now, Coco of the Matter. That Ogonga program where we say the issue when they important pass, now we they discuss. The idea now so that you, when you the house, they watch. You go learn and understand. And when you reach for all of us to contribute, make Nigeria better, we go make our Ogbonge contribution. My name now is Ogo Chokwode. And I'm going to drive the motto. But I carry two people today. Based on say this week, a very special week. If you check your calendar, if you check today's date, you go see say indeed, now the Christmas week. And for Christmas, what do people they celebrate? Eh, some people go talk their own. So others go talk, say, I agree with them. Others go talk, say, for me, oh, now like this, this thing day. But the most important thing, I say, all of us as a people will be one and we will celebrate them together. Now, why today, on top of Coco of the Matter, we do something when they're very, very special? I carry Percy when we say, him be pastor and life coach to represent my Christian brothers and sisters. I also carry Sheikh. Sheikh now, Islamic cleric, Islamic scholar. Person where we say, he don't read where we're about the religion. He savvy where we Today, then go discuss. The idea now so that all of us go know, say, for this country, we be one. And as one people, we go join our hand together to move Nigeria go to the permanent site. Make I start with my own girl visitor when they inside our studio. In name now, pastor and life coach, Clarkson Ikunze, my brother. Welcome to Cook of the Matter. Thank you very much. And yeah, this is your hands off to this now really down, Christmas down. handshake. Yeah, that's really uh, uh, <laughs> and we get our Ogun Gev visitor window for inside Kano. He be Sheikh Ali Yunis. Sheikh Ali Yunis, welcome to Coco of the Matter. We appreciate as you carry Waka come our show. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to meet you. Okay, we we'll just go straight into our conversation. Uh, but before I begin, I ask the question. Make I just tell everybody when they are say Merry Christmas. To all those when we say they watch us, remember, get out for your mind. Say, we all now human beings. And uh, what do you know if you take? No do harm to another person. And God go bless all of us for this Christmas celebration. Uh, make I start with the very important question. It be like, say, as we don't they grow up for this life, things don't they do very, very different for us. We don't they get different understanding and meaning to different things. Make I just ask you, uh, as pastor and life coach, what did Christmas mean to you? Christmas basically, as they would try to celebrate the birth of Jesus, that's um, basically not for Christians, but in the general view, it cover for everybody because Jesus will come die and a human being will be, mm. so be spirit. Very uh, true. So, as a human being will be, mm. you can't do it in the important. And so, we be necessary say we just celebrate them. Uh, and another important thing when I go so talk, we say, uh, as you they fry your stew, you understand? <laughs> when the aroma they come out, uh, the other man, know they talk, say, as he they come out, he no one enter this people window. Yeah. Everybody, when they inside the compound, yeah, exactly. go enjoy him. Yeah. And we know one practice went on this since for a very long time for inside the border of Nigeria. People go begin to share food, give their neighbors. People go call their friends, they will come together and then go enjoy their self. As we don't discuss this one about the essence of Christmas, maybe we can't go into the cocoa of the matter. Maybe we talk about religious tolerance. Before we begin to talk about religious tolerance, make I first start with our Ogbonge uh, visitor, Sheikh Ali Yunis, went there for inside Kano. Make I start with this question. On Christmas Day, our political leaders, plenty of them, then they send what they call goodwill messages. For their message, they go talk, say, for example, we felicitate with our Christian brothers and sisters. Where well, this country is this, this country is that. Let us all live in peace. Let us all live in harmony. Let us imbibe the spirit of Christmas. Let us do this, let us do that. Whether I'm a President Buario, whether I'm a Vice President Pastor Oshibajo, whether I'm a Governor of Lagos or Olu, whether I'm a Ganduje, Governor of Kano, different political leaders, then they always they send messages. But some people they talk, say, wait, oh, this message won't have send. It just be like, say, now one message will not they send. Now another thing, now will not they do. Why if we say we not know they really practice those things when we say in the day inside the message so that everywhere go make sense. Shake Ali Yunis, make I ask you. To show love, she not just only for Christmas season, New Year, Easter, Idel Fitri, Idel Kabir. How we go take forget country where we say all around the year, love then go dear our mind, and all of us go to live together in love and peace. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, it's a pleasure to meet you at this uh, festive period. Uh, as you have said, here in Nigeria, a lot of things happened. And uh, 
Really what people say is not what we see on the ground, especially concerning uh, religions. Uh, on, do, uh, on my understanding, what I understood is uh, there is uh, a lot of, uh, concerning our political leaders and religious also leaders, these two, uh, two groups are the people that lead the nation, the politicians and the religious leaders. Uh, actually, looking at the essence of religions, as you have said in Islam, the word Islam means peace. And also, as you have said, the Christian teachings always teach love. But actually, there are people that use their political offices or their political ambitions. There are religious leaders that are not really what matters to them is not really the religion, but other things. That is why sometimes we see people saying things, but on the ground what they practice is not really what they say. On my own side, what I'm going to say here is, let people be truthful in whatever they do. If they are political leaders, let them be truthful over what they say. Let us see that what they say is what they do. If they want people to, they want the nation to be one, they want to unite the different people in Nigeria. If the religious leaders also believe that we need unity in order to make Nigeria great, then let us come together and preach peace all over and let the politicians preach truthfulness in whatever they say. What I mean is, let us see in their actions that Really, what they want is unity. Sheikh Ali, please, part, thank you very much for this you, uh, answer when we say you don't give us. You don't, you don't put one step when I want to make we can't climb on top again. Agola Group will separate our political leaders and our religious leaders. The reason why I want to separate them now is say uh, there is no other place for inside this country where we say people, they gather in their numbers uh, when no be religious centers. Every Sunday, plenty of Christians go gather for different worship centers. Uh, for Friday, for example, during Jumat prayers, plenty of Muslims go gather for religious uh, centers. All of them go gather. And these are our religious leaders. Them. They go carry a microphone. They teach, uh, you know, do this, do that, do this, do that. If every weekend people, they go, and then they learn, and it can't be like, say, what then they do at the end, not be what they want. What then exactly go can't be the problem? I would like to start with you. Uh, our pastor and life coach when they with me inside studio here. Yeah. What thing we suppose they look out for? If we, for example, if people won't vote for leaders, then go say they want people when they when they competent, when they qualified, when they trustworthy. If we they look out for religious leaders, whether Christian, whether Muslim, irrespective of the religion, what thing we do things we suppose they look out for them. Say okay, this character where this person get, he really should say this one a better religious leader, and we'll go follow him. Thank you very much. So basically, uh, I think that when you're looking at a religious leader, you should be one who is not religiously biased. Hmm. So in the sense that um, even if I'm a Christian, I should not see the Islamist as um, an inferior worship person. You understand? So in other words, I have to take this person also as a brother. So what I'm saying in essence is this. We, we need to start looking at a common good instead of looking at our personal interests. So even as a Christian, I respect my values as a Christian. I should also respect the values of the Islam person. So when I'm looking at a religious person or a pastor or a preacher who has these um, values, I see him as someone to follow because he has the tendencies of, 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 of you know, fostering peace. If you don't have people like that, you see people who start bringing about segregation, you know, bigotry and all of that because they want to push their own personal interests. They want to push their religion. Even when they are teaching their people the right thing to do, people don't see what they are saying. They see what they are doing. Mm. The words must tally with the example. Meaning say, they teach what the person they teach and they think what the person they do, the two of them follow. If it can't be words and opposite, now let me say problem, don't they? So as Nigerians, like our go get visitor when the silent girls don't talk, uh, you not need to look person say, this will not be my brother, he not my religion, I not go love him, I go hate him. If we begin to see each other as human beings, it will make sense. True. Make an anti side canoe, shake Ali Yunis. I want to ask this question. Uh, people don't always talk about fanaticism. 
Meaning, say some people then they carry their religion for head. Then go they do say, now our own be the best. Now our own better pass. If you don't do our own, no problem. I won't ask you how you take things, say, we feel find solution to this problem. So that if this religion talks, say, this religion is a religion of peace. This religion is a religion of love. We are all supposed to live with each other. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Now, truly, what we go to see with that? How we go take we correct fanaticism when people go to carry religion for their head? Well, uh, on my own opinion, what I understand is uh, actually in Nigeria here, people, as if you Google, you will see that Nigerians are the most religious people on earth. I believe that the Muslims and the Christians in Nigeria are really too religious, if I can say too religious. But what I'm seeing here is there is also lack of the true knowledge of the religion. You see, the essence of or the root of fanaticism is lack of knowledge. Now, let us look at Islam. Let us go to the scripture of Islam, the Quran. You see in the Quran that Allah Ta'ala has mentioned, God Almighty says that there is no compulsion in religion. Nobody is allowed to, you know, coerce somebody, to you know, ask somebody to be a Muslim by force. There is no that. And let us look at the life of the Prophet of Islam, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and we see that in, in, the, in the life history of the Prophet, he has lived with Christians and Jews. You know, their neighbor, their, their neighbors in Medina, where he lives, 14 years, and we have never seen that the Christians that live, you know, outside Medina, very close to the town of Medina, and the Christians that are living in the Medina neighborhood, they live together with the Prophet. You see, any Muslim, that thinks that you know everybody must become a Muslim. That means he didn't understand the essence of Islam. Islam. Uh, he be like say somehow technology don't uh, see say he just hook this our talk uh, for truth. Make I come back to you. He don't explain and from his knowledge of his own uh, religion practice, he don't talk say. Everything is about love, everything is about peace, everything is about understanding, say, we all are human beings. I go like make you come from the angle of, uh, you know, as Christian too, the holy book, the Bible, where he also talk about love, peace, and understanding, so that we will balance the two together. Thank you very much. Now, um, you look at this um, fanatic, um, fanaticism, whatever. Mm. Now, I don't have a problem with you being a fanatic. Mm. Why do I say that? Everybody is a fanatic of something. Mm be a fanatic of football and have someone that you are so crazy about, be it Messi, Ronaldo, whatever. The same thing applies to my faith as a Christian. Why am I a fanatic of my faith? I understand what the person I follow, Jesus, has done for me. So if I get to the depth of what he's done for me, don't judge me for being crazy about him. Now, the only problem is when I start imposing my beliefs on others. As long as I don't cross that boundary, it's okay being a fanatic. So I think the, the borderline is understanding the, the boundaries of what your faith you know, says. If the, if the faith that you're proclaiming says, we preach love, we preach peace, then every fanaticism should be within the confines of those values. So if your being a fanatic crosses the line, it means you are doing something else. You don't even understand the faith in the first place. Mm. So that's what I'm trying to bring out. So I think one of the things we should also be making mention of in our teachings in church and in the, in the, in the, in the, in the mosque is that what we are preaching should always be centered with focus on the common good as a nation. Mm. We are Christians, we are Muslims, fine, but we are also Nigerians. Mm. So coming from that point of view, know that I'm a Nigerian, because when I meet you outside of this country, the first thing I want to know is not, are you a Christian or Muslim? Are you a Nigerian? Mm. And that's the point where we start connecting from. If I meet you in Singapore or in Sweden, are you a Nigerian? That's, I'm already at home. Mm. I'm not asking you if you're a Muslim or not. I have a friend currently now who is in, who is in Aja, you know, she's staying with a Muslim friend. Mm. I'm like, oh, what's up? There's no other person to stay with. You know, so I just want to stay with her. Mm. And they shared their ranks together. And he's teaching me something because you see, we, we, we can't do this alone. We can't change Nigeria alone. Mm. We need ourselves. Mm. We need ourselves. So be it Muslim, Christian, Buddha, Hindu, whatever. Uh, and that's why I frown at certain things that I see. I see most of the times with the Christian people. You put out an application and you say, or, an, or a vacancy, and you say um, a teacher wanted um, good and um, whatever, and then you can now say you must be a Christian. That's rubbish. Mm. 
your employment or whatever should be open to everybody. Mm -hmm. Because that the quality that you're looking for. Add. So can he deliver on the job? Can she do the stuff? Bring them in. Whether they are Muslims or Christians, we don't care. As long as it's adding to the growth of the economy, it's making things better for Nigerians, that's the what we should be looking at. Mm. Not, are you a Christian or Muslim? I don't care about that. Mm. Now, it, it doesn't stop me from witnessing my faith to other persons. Mm -hmm. I can come to you and tell you, I want you to be a Christian. I think Christianity is good. Now, even though I hold my religion or my belief to a high extent, I don't impose it on you. Mm. But even Jesus himself, when he brought the gospel to us, he said, I place before you life and death. He says, choose life that you may live. He doesn't say you must choose it. Uh, I, I, our Ubonga visitor, I know say you don't enter express now based on this uh, discussion. Our people went there for half. We will just carry small break. When we go break, come back. Uh, we will don't get shake. Ali Yunis, uh, when they inside Kano, and also pastor and life coach. Clarkson, he comes when they inside us we, for, with us for inside Lagos. We will continue our discussion. This time around, we will talk about how from the small, small things, what will we do? Uh, we go really in the show say that's what they contribute to make Nigeria better. Our religion and what they teach us, they show inside. No, when they come back and still cook of the matter. Welcome back to Coco of the matter on top of the old Bonge television station, Wazobia Max TV. Uh, Merry Christmas, did they very much in order because now Christmas week, now we did like this. And we did discuss something really very, very important religious tolerance inside Obodo, Nigeria. With me inside our Lagos studio, now pastor and life coach, Claxin Ikunze and Sheikh Ali Yunis, they join us from inside Kano. Before we go to break, we've been talking about how, as a people, we feel live together in peace inside Obodo, Nigeria. How we could see ourselves as human beings first. Before we go to talk, say, this one and this religion, this one and that religion, even at that. How we could definitely live in peace where confusion and begay no go day. We'll continue our talk. Now we want to step them up, enter the next level of our discussion. Uh, make I come ask this very, very important question because this one, now question will be said, very sure, say, plenty of people there, and they go like, make I ask. People don't come out, come talk, say, eh, it go good, make we, they took eye inside religion. And they check the kind of things when we say, you know, religious leaders, them, they teach. So that we go know, say, this is what they teach you, not the right thing. But we get some kind of join body when we say, these religious leaders, uh, if not all, many of them, them belong to the join body. For example, we get the Christian Association of Nigeria, CAN. We also get the JNI. The JNI, not join body, when we say, senior of all the Muslims inside Obodo, Nigeria. These are the two major religion practices for this Nigeria. We get traditionalists. And some of these people, they look up to our traditional leaders, as people when we say, uh, then they lead them. How we go take fear and sure say, these organizations, they want to don't give example, for example, Khan, JNI, even our traditional leaders, they want to say, they be the custodians of our rich cultural heritage. These people, them, no go can allow, maybe, things when consign politics, things when consign sentiment and bias, block their eye. You can't be like saying they affect what they do. Impossible. May I ask first? It's impossible. Say Christian Association of Nigeria can to a body of Christians. And then when they do this, when we say politics no go there inside, bias no go there inside, sentiment no go there inside. So also JNI. It did very possible. It's very possible. But it did easy. It's no easy. Um, when I say it's not easy, it's not like it's not doable. Hmm. You get the point. So it's doable. It's, it means then that you have to consciously do it. Hmm. If you leave it to chance, it may not happen. Hmm. So practicing scriptures, you have to be deliberate about it. It has to be intentional. Mm -hmm. You don't just wake up and say, okay, it's going to happen. It doesn't happen like that. So your mind has to be focused. This is the end. This is what we want to achieve. And so if we're going to achieve this, there should be steps to achieving that. And then we must ensure that these laid down steps are being followed. Mm -hmm. So if, if Khan wants to um, bring about um, steps towards achieving um, tolerance, with, with the teachings that we have in churches, through the pastors who are in this association, they can't bring up stuff like that. So it's up to them to now decide. And I think it's something they should look into, um, seeing that um, we have a lot of religious clash here and there. So if, if that's happening, the person who is in charge of the Khan Association should be able to call people and say, guys, whatever you're teaching, ensure people understand we are one Nigerians, mm. and that, okay, the teachings of scriptures does not promote violence. Mm. You understand? And then people start imbibing the culture of not um, you know, being um, wild and being loose. Mm. You know, we start bringing ourselves together. When I see someone who is on the street, who is a Muslim, who is not in my faith, 
I can reach out and help them. Hmm. If I have a friend who is not Christian, he's a Muslim, he needs help or needs a recommendation somewhere, I can recommend them. We're fostering peace that way, we're fostering unity. Let me even say this, very important because I, I should state this. When you are being tolerant and accommodating others, you are not compromising your faith. Hmm. Hmm. This hmm. is very key hmm. because that's where we have an issue. You, you, you think by housing a Muslim or going to lunch with a Muslim, you have become a Muslim. That's not true. Mm. You, you change faith by putting belief in the, in the, in the, in the faith. Mm. You understand what I'm trying to say? Mm -hmm. You change your beliefs by putting your faith in that belief. So I don't put faith in Islam, but I love Islam. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? Mm. I, don't, I don't believe in Buddhism, but if I see a Buddhist, I will help him. Mm -hmm. Because that woman being. Because that woman being. Mm. So he needs my help. As a matter of fact, my helping him goes a long way in my converting him if I want to. You understand? So it's in the show of love that we find a common goal. It's not in being, we should learn to focus on what binds us, not our differences. Hmm. Hmm. Make we they put I on top of the things where we say, if they join us together, no be those things where we say, they separate us inside Obodo, Nigeria. Sheikh Ali Yunis, our Ogonga visitor, when they with us for inside Abuja, I did very sure, so anyway, when they go, they nod here and say, hmm, hmm, hmm. Wisdom, wisdom. I go like bring them into the conversation too, so that everybody go understand. Remember what we talk. This one not be about, uh, I be Christian, I be Muslim. Now this one I do, now that one no. We talk about religious tolerance inside of Nigeria. How all of us go feel live together. Now, our president, President Mohamed Wari, now Muslim. Our vice president, Professor Yemi Oshibadio, as God will have it, now pastor. I never hear say two of them, they quarrel for one day. In fact, look, I even tell people when they are so. You know, say, Ashiwaju Bola Hamed Tinubu Hamed. Hamed, na Muslim name. The Jagaban Bogu, former governor of Lagos, national leader of the APC, in wife, Senator Oluremi Tinubu, na pastor for the redeemed Christian Church of God. We never ever hear say one day, then quarry. Oh, you be this, you be that. So we need to understand, say, if we all look ourselves as human beings first and love each other, we go help ourselves. If you need help, for example, you sick, you go to hospital, you go ask the doctor whether you be Christian, you be Muslim before you treat me. No, you need person when they qualified, when go treat you and make you do all right. Sheikh Ali Yunis, I would like to involve you now for this hour. Uh, discussion so that you go chuck them out inside. Uh, Sheikh Ali Yunis, uh, some people, they come out, they talk, say, uh, my religion, are the best religion, I don't care what anybody talk. And this thing, they always, they cause tension, they cause problem. I go like us, look, we come from the area of education. More come from the area of education. How we go take free, they teach. Shed and say, we will go back to primary school, or we go put them inside our curriculum, that is, the way they teach inside schools. Say, everybody need to live in peace and love, not be about the religion or that religion. How we go take for use through education, enlighten people, open their eyes to see, say, we all will be one. Uh, thank you, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I really appreciate what the pastor has said. He has mentioned many good things, uh, especially the issue of being uh, fanatic about your belief. What he, what he said, I really appreciated what he said. You see, everybody, uh, you know, respects and really likes what he, he does. But the issue is to live in peace and harmony, to make our nation, you know, great, to live, to make it, you know, a better place to live together. This is a very important point to mention here. Really, uh, it has been in our curriculum. In our secondary school curriculum, I know there are, uh, in social study or civic education, there are places where tolerance and you know peace and loving to be living together has been uh, is being taught. But what I'm saying is, let us go back and repeat what we have said. Let religious leaders practice what they preach. If you say you are preaching your religion, like in Islam, we say Islam means peace. Let us live in peace with our neighbors. As I say, Islam does not, you know, command that it should be imposed on everybody. As I say, the prophet of Islam lives with Christians and Jews together in one environment. And also, if you look in, into the history of, uh, for example, Spain, it has been under Islamic rule for about 600 years. 
Let's look at India. It has been under Islamic rule for 600 years, but still there are other people that practice different, different religions. Let us come back to Nigeria and look at ourselves here. Nobody will say, live what you believe. But what we're saying is, let us preach to our people that let's work for the common good of the nation. Let our belief taught us to be good to others. As I say, we are commanded in Islam to be good to our brothers, to our neighbors. When your neighbor is not a, is, is not a Muslim, it doesn't mean, or somebody that stays in where you live is not a Muslim, it doesn't mean that he's your enemy. There's, ne there's never a place where this has been taught in Islam. What I'm saying here, not only in our secondary or primary schools, let us make it, you know, uh, for the leaders, our politicians, our religious leaders, let us practice what we preach. Hmm. Let us see w what we are saying on the ground. Hmm. And also what, uh, what I like here to mention is there is something that happens in Nigeria that I really think that we must change it before we live in peace. You see, uh, like here in Kano, there are a lot of people from almost every state from Nigeria, we live together in Kano here. Mm -hmm. What I like is the leaders, let them show, you know, their people that these people that are staying in, in together with you are the people from Nigeria. I mean, they are Nigerians. They have the right to stay in this land. And then they have the right to practice what they believe. Mm. As long as it does not breach, you know, the, 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 peace, the peaceful coexistence of the, of, the, of the state. But what we are seeing is a lot of times there are, in, in the two different uh, religions of Islam and Christianity, there are people that really, in their, you know, type of preaching, you will see that, I see they you know, trying to show their people that whoever is not together with you in your belief, it's not your, it's not your brother, it's not, does not like you, it's your enemy. This is a mistake that must be corrected. Hmm. Sheikh Ali that Lulus, uh, all the talk where you don't talk full ground there, eh? now talk where we say, it, it go grow, it go grow. It, it will make sense. We appreciate how you come from this angle. Uh, but I would like to point out something. We don't talk about uh, the essence of Christmas. We don't talk about religion. We don't talk about what the people go do. What the religious leaders go do. Maybe we can enter one very, very important area. I uh, know, say, maybe when we been, they come. We are not since I go go there, but I will go there so that we are go talk on our mind for this particular matter. Maybe we talk about our political leaders. Since 1999, May 29, when I remember how leaders go carry Bible or carry the Holy Quran, say, I promise, I pledge, I swear to work for Nigerian people, to do everything when the office say make I do. Since that time, it really shows uh, many of our leaders then, then they go church or then they go mosque. They'll be Christians or they'll be Muslims. Irrespective of the faith, when we say these people, they do. But if we check Nigeria, it be like say them too. The things when we say, then they learn for church or for mosque. They know they put them into practice. Because if the Bible says, love your neighbor as you love yourself, now we when we vote them there, now we be their neighbor. If Islam says it's a religion of peace, then when we Muslims, now if we say they're supposed to ensure say we get peace inside of Nigeria. But it be like say somehow, somehow. We know they see all the teachings when our religious leaders they teach them for what they do inside politics. We'll go break. When we go this break, come back, we we'll go answer the question. I go leave and I won't answer the question. No. Why if we say our religious leaders? Share if then they go to church or mosque, then they close here. Because some of the things what would they say for this country? People when we say they'll be real Christians, real Muslims, when love their neighbor and when love peace, they're not going to do that kind of thing. When we go this break, come back. Sheikh Ali Yunus and Pastor and Life Coach Clark Sinikunze go answer the question. No go anywhere when they come back. Now still coco of the matter. To enjoy more of this, our go get videos when you just watch. Press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.